Hey guys, good morning. So I just want to wait a few minutes, but we're going to continue with our study um, for God's extended mercy. But how is everybody? morning. Good morning. I'm just going to wait a few minutes. Good morning. So um, we're going to go into um, God's extended mercy. And I just have a couple of scriptures we're going to go off of. Um, so I first want to start with 1 Corinthians 2.14. It says, Whoever does not have the Spirit cannot receive the gifts that come from God's Spirit. Uh, such a person really does not understand them. And they seem to be nonsense uh, because their value can be judged only on a spiritual basis. Now, this is some um, other translation. This is a GNT translation. I kind of like the way that it's written here. It, it makes sense. It's more clear in this version. So again, it says, whoever does not have the spirit cannot receive the gifts that come from God's spirit such a person really does not understand them and they seem to be nonsense because their value can be judged only on a spiritual basis so um you know part of our study is god's extended mercy right and before that we were uh, studying on the seven deadly sins which is lust, gluttony, greed, slothful, wrath, envy, and pride. And so when you look at them intently, you know, if you give yourself, you know, get yourself a pen and paper and write down all the seven deadly sins and pick out verses and meditate on it, you will see a poor reflection of yourself. But this is not to discourage you. This is to humble. You know, everybody will be humble. And the Word of God is alive and active. It's like a double-edged sword. So it is meant to rebuke, correct, and train. Um, a wicked man will stay down lowly, but a righteous man will get up seven times. So when you see these corrections, um, Proverbs talks about um, of when you take heed to a correction, let me go look this up really quick. Proverbs is a wonderful book. Like, just to understand an example of how we are to walk. You know, uh, Proverbs. Taking heed to corrections. Whoever loves instruction, this is my favorite, okay, this is Proverbs 12, 1. It says, whoever loves instructions loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. <laughs> That's what it says, uh, no matter the form. Okay, this is a Proverbs. Proverbs 20, 30, it says, blows that hurt 
cleanses away evil. Uh, as do stripes, you know, by his stripes we are healed. And here's a proverb that talks about this. As do stripes the inner depths of our hearts. Nobody likes. Nobody likes to be corrected. Like, how many of you guys, um, like if you have a friend that always seems to be like, I don't know, they love to tell you uh, what you need to do in your life, you know? Nobody likes to be told uh, what um, when they're wrong, and they don't like to be, um, you know, someone coming in and saying this is how you should live, usually for a friend. But Jesus is our friend now, and um, he corrects us too. The only thing is that's different here is that Jesus really knows what's best for us. Our friends don't always entirely know what's best for us, but Jesus is our true friend. He's faithful, and he truly knows what's best for us. Um, so, you know, going into Leviticus uh, chap uh, chapter 16, 21, it says, He is to lay both hands, okay, when the, the escape goat. He is to lay both hands on the head of the alive, the live goat, and confess over it, with, um, over it all the wickedness and the rebellion of the Israelites, and all their sins, and to put them on the goat's head, and he shall send the goat away into the wilderness, in the care of someone appointed for the task. So the royal priest would basically lay the sins on the scapegoat and the scapegoat would go into the wind, uh, wilderness with the people's sins, you know? So, um, hello everyone. So everyone, um, our sins are literally laid upon Jesus' forehead. Like he, he, he has held our sins. He has been our escape goat. You know, our wages of sin is death. So, he has taken that. He has bared that for us. So, his extended mercy is only through him. He, there's only one way to the Father. Um, and that's through Jesus Christ. And John uh, fourteen six, it says, I right, hold on. It's Jesus says it unto him. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh to the Father. No one, no one cometh unto the Father but by me. He is the only way. I'm just getting rid of uh, the negative, the negative people for a second. There's only one way to the Father, and that is through Jesus Christ. So. Jesus is our escape goat. If we confess our sins, our rebellion, he, he is free to forgive it, you know? He also went and fasted and prayed in the wilderness. So it's interesting how the goat gets the sins of the people and, and then it's in the wilderness, right? Jesus literally went through the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, fasting and praying and overcoming temptation. He is literally the escape goat, you know? So he is the only one, he is, he is our escape goat. So in Numbers 5, 6 through 7, say to the Israelites, any man or woman who wrongs, okay, this is very, very deep. So pay it close attention. Uh, Numbers 5, 6, six through seven it says to the israelites any man or woman who wrongs another in any way and so is unfaithful to the lord is guilty 
and must confess the sin they have committed, and they must make full restitution for the wrong they have done, add a fifth of the value to it, and give it to all the persons they have wronged. So it literally says in Numbers that if you had wronged somebody, you need to confess it to that person and make up. To, you know, there is some kind of action. And how many of us have been, you know, have wronged each other, even in our families, our friends, and we have not confessed what we have done wrong? And the craziest thing, during the pandemic, I saw more of my family members coming to me and apologizing for certain things. And it's crazy that we have to wait until a life-threatening situation to come clean about certain things. And I myself am struggling with this. I have wronged and I have... I am I'm humbling myself. I'm, I'm starting to realize that I was very selfish in certain relationships, in my family, my friends, and I haven't made full restitution. I haven't fully poured out my heart and apologized for certain things. The thing that holds me back, and I'm sure this probably holds you back, is an argument or, um, you know, you always have that family member that will just say, yeah, that's true. Why did you do this? Instead of take what you're trying to pour out sincerely, it turns into an argument. So I'm in that spot right now. I want to come clean with certain people, but I feel like it's, um, it kind of holds me back because I don't want it to turn into an argument. You know, that's my, what I'm dealing with right now. But I'm sure that maybe there's some things that you guys go through. We're supposed to make, we're supposed to confess our sins to one another if we have done wrong. You know, Jesus said, if you even thought it, if you, you, if you even had hatred or anger in your heart, you had sinned, you know, you have, you have went against the law, you know, and it says here in Numbers, um, any woman who wrongs another in any way and so is unfaithful. Now, it's not to the people, okay? This is where David says, you alone, O Lord, is who I transgressed. Even though, you know, we have sinned against each other, it is, it, we, you know, the sin itself alone, we sinned against the Father because this is something he asked of all of us, really, not just the Israelites, all of humanity, to be loving and kind to one another. This is the greatest command, Jesus says, is to love one another as ourself, you know? And if you're struggling with loving yourself, ask for the Lord to help you love yourself more, you know? I don't know. I have wrong people in my heart. I've had anger and hatred in my heart. Recently, the Lord had showed this to me, that I've had hatred to certain family members. It's not that I want to. It's crazy. The devil will put a seed into you, and then it's up to you if you want to water it, just like the Word of God is a seed. The devil will put a thought, and this is why we're told to pull, put every thought into captivity, because if you feed it, you, let, you give the devil a foothold in your life. And so they, they may not be thoughts that I really feel. It could be the enemy trying to turn me against my loved ones. And honestly, it's an everyday battle for me at least. Um, I have to decide, am I going to give in to my thoughts that are um, unholy and... It's more of, like, if you look at the commands, um, falsely accusing your neighbor, like, sometimes we jump to conclusions. I'm one of those people that sometimes I jump to conclusions before I even know the full story. And this is why that was one of the Ten Commands, you know? Do not falsely accuse your neighbor, you know? Fal don't, um... Do fall, you know? Do not falsely accuse your neighbor. Like you do not know. This is what a lot of arguments usually start. Is is sometimes you think you know something, and then, you know, you learned that it's not that way, and then you feel humiliated. And that's what sin is. It, it's shamefulness. It's humiliation of what you do. You know. So, 
And this is why Jesus says there is a church that is naked, wretched, poor, blanket, um, <laughs> poor, um, blind and naked, poor, blind and naked. They're wretched, poor, blind and naked. And Jesus says, counsel me, counsel me and, and, and get garments because you're naked, you know, you're, your shame is out in the open. You know, you haven't repented fully. You haven't made restitution. You know, this is God's will is to have heaven here on earth. And so we should be peacemakers. Blessed is the peacemakers for they shall have peace. So we should always try to make restitution, um, make things right the best that we can. It's hard. The devil makes it hard. He makes it hard. Jesus says that you don't have to do it alone, whatever it is. Um, so ri uh, rituals and sacrifices alone, uh, 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 rituals and sacrifices alone, however, do not um, bring forgiveness. They do not bring forgiveness. Um, we must humble ourselves and acknowledge our wrongs and resolve and to depart to, uh, sin. So there's a lot of good proverbs about this, you know, like making a peace and, you know, in every kind of, and we even have great examples in every kind of argument or, you know, dispute, try to find some kind of agreement and make peace. Think about it. Abraham and Lot, they argued about a piece of land. Abraham humbled himself and said and made a lot to decide of you know to go first and to choose what part of the land he wants um, let me just go read that really quick and the Lord shows me this story a lot because um, you know I have had I had disagreements and I have been puffed up and I've, I've been proud but I've learned that what God asks of us is much better than going, being puffed up and being proud. It has much better benefits, you know. Like I was saying before with First Corinthians, um, I forget where, but um, this is the fruits of the spirit, you know. Like when you, when you forsake these seven deadly sins and you learn to just humble yourself. You start to bear that good fruit, and that's what Abraham had. He had the good fruit. Abraham, and I just need to apologize because I don't know what's going on with me lately, but I've been feeling very tired and nauseous and like just blah lately. So I'm just trying to like uh, push through and not give into it, you know. Um, in the Bible, okay, so, and, and by the way, Abraham's nephew was more like a son to him, you know, so, let's go, uh, this, The Holy Spirit just wants me to you know, talk about this. Abraham. And Lot. So Abraham and Lot, they agreed to a part ways. Okay, there there was a little bit of a dispute at first. This is normal, you know. We everybody has a dispute every once in a while in a family. But Abraham, he says, "Look, look, look, look. Let's not let's not quarrel over this. Let's come into an agreement, you know. Let's you know, we we both worship the same God here, you know." A lot of people argue 
um, they argue a lot in their faith, and it's, some of it has to do with more worldly views rather than the scriptures itself. We both worship the same God, you know. Let's not let's not quarrel, you know. Let's not um, make this out into a big thing. Genesis 13. It says so. Abraham went up from Egypt, and uh, he and his wife, and all the that he had, and Lot with him, into the um, Neb Nebuga. Uh, now Abraham was very rich in livestock, in silver and gold, and he journeyed on from the uh, Nebug as far as, I'm going to read from my Bible actually. I'm using the computer, but it would be easier if I just read from my Bible. Okay. Genesis 13. 1 through 18. Okay. So Abraham went out of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. And Abraham was very rich in cattle and silver and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south even to uh, Beth Bethel, unto the place where he his tent had been at, at the beginning, beginning between Bethel and Hiah. On to the place of the altar, which he had made. There at first, and there Abram called on his, the name of the Lord. And Lot also went with, uh, went with Abraham, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together uh, for their substance with great, uh, for their substance was great so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife. There, there was a strife. There was an argument. There was a strife between uh, the herdmen of, of uh, Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanites and the Prezerites dwelt then in the land. And Abraham said to unto Lot, Let there be no strife. I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we are brethren, he says. He, he says, let's not fight about this. We're brethren. Um, is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself. He said, then let's just separate. We'll go separate ways, but let's not fight. Let's not quarrel about this. He says, I pray thee from me, thee, from me if thou wilt take the hand then I will go to the right or if thy depart to the right hand then I will go to the left and Lot's eyes lifted up you know Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah even as the land of the Lord like the land of Egypt as thou comest unto Zor. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves. The one from the other, Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the city of, of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. So, now Abraham he 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 was a peacemaker to his nephew and and his nephew truly thought the grass was greener on the other side so he learns to find out that in Sodom there they were wicked much more wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly so the point is is that Abraham he did not you know he did not let the argument continue. He did not force um, his nephew to do something. He let his nephew figure it out. And later on, you find he finds out that what he chose was not the best. Um, and we can learn a lot from Abraham's story here, and also Lot's story. Um, but you know, 
the point is is that you always want to acknowledge your wrongs and you always want to resolve and depart from sin you know if you see something starting to stir up depart from it depart from it the best that you can okay so what happens when when you start to resolve when you start to depart from sin a change has to happen a change has to happen Galatians 5 departing from fleshly desires and going after the spiritual desires this is what happens like I was saying earlier you know, I, I, when I'm always on here, I, I continue to say this, is that the royal priest in the Levitical system, this is Jesus now, he's a royal priest. He's coming in and out of our hearts to see, are we departing from the fleshly desires? Is there some things happening here? Then the cleansing happens. When God sees, when Jesus starts to see progresses, your heart is, is starting to turn and you're starting to forsake those fleshly desires, and now your gaze is fixed upon him, then he can bring you your healing. Then he can clean you. Then you can bear that good fruit. Um, so Galatians chapter 5. We're going to read that. Okay. Stand fast. Therefore, in the liberty where within, up oh, here goes the connection again. I apologize. Okay, hold on. This is the King James version. Now I'm going to read from my Bible. It never ceases to fail. <laughs> here, let me fix this really quick. Galatians chapter 5. So you see that here, Abraham had the fruits of the Spirit. He didn't go after the fleshly desires. He didn't say, you know what, I'm going to take this green land. How about you go over there? You know, he didn't give in to the desires of the flesh. He said, let's not strife. Let's not provoke each other to envy. Let's not... Um, get easily angered here let's resolve the matter you know that's how he handles the situation and okay let's get to Galatians chapter 5 Galatians chapter 5 okay Stand fast, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty within Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. This is what Paul is talking about. If you do the things of the flesh, if you, get, if you give in to lust, if you give in to gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, pride, you become, you're, you get, you become yoked and enslaved in that bondage and you are now free in Christ so therefore we have to put off the old man this is exactly now I understand what Paul's talking about here this is what he's talking about we don't go back you know we don't walk in those ways anymore so it says again steadfast therefore in liberty within Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage, behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit nothing, you, uh, you nothing. So what he's talking about is ritual. You know, um, a lot of the early believers thought that they had to continue doing sacrifices, continue to do rituals, which Jesus is our, our atonement. There's no need to circumcise yourself. There's no need to go through a um, purification through a ritual anymore. This is what Paul's talking about. He's not talking about the Ten Commands, you know? He's, this is a lot easier to understand if you read the whole Bible and not just the New Testament. Like, when you start to divide the Word of God, 
you don't reap the full benefit of the the whole word. The whole word of God is 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 for rebuking, correcting, and training, and healing, and it's it's to help you understand God better. If you want to understand God better, you have to read the whole word. So here, here Paul he says, for I testify, um, testfully, again. To every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to the whole law. He's a he's a he's indebted to the whole law. Basically, if you get circumcised, you do these outward rituals, and you're indebted to the whole law. Uh, Christ is um, is become of no effect unto you because now you're looking to achieve your own righteousness through a ritual, which Jesus fulfilled. You know. Um, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. This is what Paul is talking about. He, he, he actually just amplifies the Ten Commands when he, when you read what he's writing. Um, and he was law. He he was zealous. He was zealous for the law. Um, he meditated on it day and night. Um, it said that he knew more than the elders, so he he knows what he's talking about here. And if you read the Old Testament, the Levitical law, you will see exactly what Paul's talking about. He's talking about the rituals to make yourself purified. And then this is why he's saying, "Why are you doing this? You've already been purified. You've already been washed in the Spirit. There's no need for you to go through these rituals." outwardly anymore then Christ has become no value to you you know this is what he's saying if you're doing these things if you're circumcising yourself if okay say if you're a woman this is a thing I'm, I'm in uh, Leviticus chapter 15 um, a woman's unclean when she's in her menstrual and she's even another seven days she would be considered unclean after the so she wouldn't be considered ceremonially un uh, she would be considered ceremonially clean when she's done you know these and then she would have to do a ritual to make atonement for her on cleansiness so it's both for male and female i'm sure women were trying to do these cleansings for themselves just not it's not recorded but you can see that the men were trying to circumcise themselves uh to be to be cleansed Paul had to stop this right away because early Christians were thinking that they had to make atonements for themselves when Jesus was that atonement once and for all. That's why he says, "Who be who bewitched you? You know, who put a spell on you?" Because this is then Jesus would be no effect if you're gonna if you're going to go down this road. You know. So, um, Galatians five five it says. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. That's how we're saved. Uh, for in Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcised, but faith which worketh by love. Faith that worketh by love. So you have to have faith is what saves you, but you have to worketh it by love. Um, making peace with everyone, making restitution, clearing, clearing your conscience. You know, I had, a, you know, one of my coworkers. You know, I I heard a rumor and uh, and it was about my boss and I was a little upset and I just brought it to her attention just because I just wanted to clear my conscience to get it off my my mind. And her too wanted to clear her conscience and she said, no, that I didn't say this and I want to clear my conscience. And we went straight to the source to figure out the situation. And it's kind of the same way through Jesus Christ. You want to go straight to the source to solve, resolve your situation and and clear your conscience, you know, always. And this should be a daily thing. I mean, when you do this, you're at so much peace. You get great sleep. There is nothing that's on your mind or weight, putting weight on you, you know, you you go straight to the source and then try to make peace with everyone. Um, 
And so here in 5 5, it says, For we through the, the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcised availeth anything, nor uncircumcised, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well. Who hid hinder you that you should not obey the truth? So here Paul is just asking, who is telling you not to obey the truth? Who is telling you that you have to go through all these things to attain salvation? Salvation is through Christ alone. This um, per perversion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven, a little le leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have uh, confidence in you through the Lord that ye will will be none otherwise minded but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whoever uh, he be and I brethren if you preach circumcision why do I yet suffer persecution here Paul is saying if if I teach against it why am I still being persecuted you know why why is he still being persecuted he says then is the offense of the cross seized? I would have, um, I would they were even cut off with trouble, uh, troubling you. For brethren, ye have not been called unto liberty, only us, not liberty for an, an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, but if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye not be consumed one of another. This is this I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the lusts the lusts against the spirit, so the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit it against the flesh. So they're in battle against each other. They're literally in battle against you want to do what's right, you know? But sometimes you fall short and you do these things. Well, that's why we have Jesus to help us. Uh, but he, he wants us to overcome just as he has. We can see that in the book of Revelations. He wants you to overcome. Um, we should never take his grace and mercy of it. Um, take it for advantage. We shouldn't do that. Um, so here. For all all the law is fulfilled on... Okay, let me go back to this. It says, For the lusts, the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit it against the flesh. And these are contrary, uh, the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. So if you are being led by the Spirit and you're not falling in these sins, you're not gratifying the desires of the flesh, then you're being walked. You're, you're walking by the Spirit. <laughs> and then you're walking by the Spirit. And we all have battles. Like last night... I gave into um, having ice cream and then I had some kind of cheese chips, you know, and I started thinking to myself, you know, I see what God's talking about with gluttony because after I was done with this, I didn't feel fully satisfied. It's like that wasn't the snack I was looking for. You ever guys, ever, you ever feel like that? You have a snack and you just don't feel satisfied. It's not the snack that you were looking for. Um, honestly, the Lord had showed me that it's not just with this, a lot of things. A lot of us are looking for something and we don't fully, truly feel satisfied. And these are the desires of the flesh, they're empty. We think that they will fulfill us. They, we think that this is what we need or we, what we want, but they end up coming back void, right? And the Word of God does not come back void. It truly is satisfying to those who find them, you know, who finds the words and takes delight and finds healing, it truly is. Um, and, and the word of God 
like I keep sharing, is the is meant for rebuking, correcting, and, and training. So when you do get rebuked and correct, you feel like, oh God, what am I to do now? He just wants you to be humble and, and realize and then ask for help so he can help you, you know? So um, in 517, it says for the... I think we read this part. So it's 518. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Okay, so when you go against the law, it, it gives you a reflection, sometimes a poor one, if you're living in sin. Then you're under the curse of the law. This is what Paul is talking about. You're under the curse of the law when you do sin. Because later on, he literally amplifies the law. He literally tells you, do not do adultery, do not do fornication, do not do any kind of uncleansiness. And that's rebellion against the law. And it says, okay, so going in 518, it says, But if ye be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. In 19, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleansiness, and lavishness. 20, it's idolatry, um, witchcraft, hatred, uh, I don't know that word, emolescence, wrath, strife, seductions, and heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, Re revealing revelings and such like of these I tell you before I uh, before as I have also told you in the in the um, in time past that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven and why is he saying this because they're practicing lawlessness it's quite clear the law still stands. Jesus says that as long as heaven and earth is still here, it still stands. It stands and it shows you and it teaches you and it corrects you. When you go against it, you're under the curse. Um, 22, it says, but the fruits of the Spirit, now these are the fruits of the Spirit, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, suffering, gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance and that is a form of self-control um so just being self-controlled against such there is no law and they that are christ's have crucified the flesh this is what it means to take up your cross daily you crucify the fleshly desires you no longer give in to lust you no longer give in to gluttony you no longer give in to greed uh, sloth, wrath, envy, pride. You crucified that desire and you don't do it anymore. And this is where it says, I forget, but in the Old Testament it says, uh, take your wicked deeds out of my sight and learn to do good. You know, it's been God's desire for us to do good because God is holy. Sin is not holy. And when we live in sin, um, we become the children of the devil, you know? So we have to learn to try to live without sin. There is, you know, people say it's impossible. Some things, yeah, some things are a little impossible, but that's where God, uh, that's where Jesus meets us and helps us. But there's some things that we can truly let go. We can truly let go of hatred we can tr truly let go of wrath. We can truly let go of envy. We can let go of these things. We don't need to have them. The other things, Jesus meets us in the middle and helps us, you know? So, Galatians, this is, okay, this is what the new life is. In Galatians 6, brethren, uh, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such and and one in the in the spirit of meekness consider thyself least thou also be tempted bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of christ for if a man think himself 
to uh, be something when he is not he deceives himself so this is um you know to be in Christ is to be truly humble to really let things go like 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 La, um like Abraham to his nephew Lot he truly let the the conversation he said please let's not quarrel we're brethren you know this is what it means to have brotherly love it says um but let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in him alone and not in another so for every man shall bear his own burden um, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things be not deceived uh, God is not mock it says that whoever a man soweth that shall he also reap for he that soweth to his flesh shall also he shall also um, flesh shall of the flesh reap so if he reaps the fleshly desires that will that is what he will reap that's that is what he will be consumed in fleshly things um yeah you, you ever meet somebody like so now maybe most of you guys are worshiping god in truth and in spirit and now you're gratified in the desires of the spirit um but i'm sure now that you're on this other side you're starting to notice how carnal some other people are. And now you see the difference between living in the spirit and living in the flesh. Where you see people really just literally building a kingdom here. Like the Lord showed me a dream of a bunch of idols. People were statues. I'm going to share this dream really quick. And it has a lot to do with social media. They're making a platform for themselves. And they're building up like these little statues. Like, they looked like little Nebuchadnezzar statues, you know? And um, I saw a bunch of, uh, like, YouTube icons, um, Instagram, TikTok, and they were building themselves up and getting likes and, 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 all, and, and hearts and all that stuff. And they were building themselves up, and the Lord showed me um, they weren't building for the spirit. They were building for fleshly things. And it all came crumbling down. Just like the the story, well, the what happened in Nebuchadnezzar's, Nebuchadnezzar's uh, dream. Um, God said to uh, Daniel that eventually it would all come crumbling down. The Lord showed me the very same thing. You know, what people are trying to build for themselves is all going to come crumbling down. And it's true. The word says that every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess. Everybody will see the Lord coming on the clouds and they will see the truth, you know? Um, God's name is Yahweh, but he, in the, the Old Testament, it says, I am. Okay, I am. And um, Jesus' name is Yeshua. Yeshua is, is how you say it, I think, correctly in Hebrew. But the Lord had showed me that that's not in the Bible. Our Bible has been translated, okay? It has been translated from Hebrew into Greek. The, the original translation is Greek and Hebrew. So... That's what it says. Um, okay, then what is the Hebrew? And to be honest with you, the Lord knows when we look to Him that it's Him. His ways and his thoughts are not ours. He is not a man that he should lie. He does not... He knows the very little we know. Paleo-Hebrew. Okay. I'm not giving into this. This is just another... Another way to divide people. You know, like... Let's not argue. Let's not just... Uh, 
uh, over a name. Like the word of God, that's who God is. He is I am. He is Elohim. He is one God. With Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, I'm not giving into this messenger from Satan. You know, it's just another way to divide the people. You know, there. Jesus knows when you t when you call onto Him, He knows that is the name that the English is translated. You know, which is really supposed to be Joshua, but He knows. You know. It, this is this is part of a lesson actually like this is part of the lec the les the lesson here there is too many denominations too many my the view of how we are to worship what are we to call god it's too much it divides the body and that is here to still kill and destroy if we don't come together and acknowledge that we all worship Jesus Christ, Yahweh, and the Holy Spirit. It divides the body. And God did not come here to divide the body. He came here to have, well, in some ways, yes, to separate good and evil, you know? So, you know, He comes here to the devil comes here to separate us, you know, to still kill and destroy us. And any way he can, he will work through the body. Anyways, back to the study. In 1 Kings, now, when God's extended mercy, when he, you know, no one goes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. He is the only way. In 1 Kings 21, 27, through 29. We see a great example of this when uh, Ahab, um, he, is, he is living in terrible sin, but he shows true remorse. And this goes to show that anyone can truly be saved. He ends up being saved, but his family, the sins of himself, gets put onto his family. This is why we should pray about genetical curses being broke, broken. And you see that the things that we do has a ripple impact and can, and, uh, can affect our, our children and our, their children's children. So it's important for us to, like in numbers, make full restitution for the things that we do against each other. Make peace, you know, so that these things don't fall in, onto our children's children. First uh, Kings 21, uh, 27 through 29 it says when Ahab heard these words he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and fasted he laid in sackcloth and went around meekly and then the Lord the, the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite and he he noticed and he says to um, you know he's he says have you noticed how Ahab has humbled himself has humbled himself before me because he has humbled himself, I will not bring this disaster in his days. Ahab was denying himself. And later on in scripture, you know, this is something that the Jewish people would do is tear, tear their clothes and repent. But then they weren't doing it really in their hearts. And God says, don't tear your clothes. Tear the garments in your heart. You know, repent. Have you know, remorse for what you do. Stop doing what is wrong and learn to do what's right. You know, because people were doing these things and it turned into a, a habit. Let's not get in the habit of doing the same things that they were doing, you know. So, yeah, so 
This is what happens to Ahab. It says, Have you noticed how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he humbled himself, I will not bring this disaster in his days, but I will bring it on his house in the days of his sons. And this is true, God's word, because the sins of their forefathers fall. And, and also you see Jezebel. Jezebel is not repenting. You know, Ahab is repenting. So you see two types of people. The Lord showed me in a dream that there's going to be two types of people in the last days. There is going to be truly an Ahab who's going to see all the sins they have done and truly repent, truly have remorse of what they have done. And then you're going to have the Jezebel who does not repent, does not turn. And by the way, she is in Revelations. She's in the church where the church, the judgment happens first, you know. So going further, uh, we're going to go look in Isaiah 1, 16 through 17. It says, wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight and stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. You know? And we're going to read the rest of Isaiah um, chapter chapter 1. rest of this. Because I, I put this as a note to, to read. So Isaiah. And what Isaiah, what all the prophets are warning the people is literally everything that I'm reading. I feel like I'm going back in time and I'm seeing things repeat itself here, right now. It, history is repeating itself. Everything the prophets uh, warn the people about, I'm seeing the people do. People are doing these things that Isaiah is warning, Jeremiah is warning, all the prophets are warning. Literally happening right now. Okay, so in Isaiah, here in, in Isaiah chapter 1, Jehovah, okay, here's another name for God, Jehovah. Uh, the version, the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Azah, Jotham, Azahah, and Hezedek, uh, king of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. The Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Um, the ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know me. They do not know me. My people um, doth not consider. They do not consider God. This, guys, I feel like history is repeating itself. People don't acknowledge God anymore. A sinful nature, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evil do doers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel into onto anger. They have gone away backward. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt me more and more. The whole head is sick. He says the whole head is sick, and the whole heart is faint. From soul, the, from the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and and bruises, and this is what happens with sin. You know, it manifests the flesh. It really manifests in the flesh, and it will cause sicknesses and disease. God's saying that too. Uh, Purifying sores, purifying sores, that they have not been closed, neither uh, bound up, neither molded with ointment. Your country is desolate, your cities are burned with fire, and land strangers devour in it your uh, presence, and it is desolate, as overthrown by strangers. 
and the daughters of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a log in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged, besieged city. Expect the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like Gomorrah. This topic of Sodom and Gomorrah keeps coming up. Like, Jesus says that in the last days, it will be like Sodom and Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ye uh, ear unto the law of your God, ye people of Gomorrah. To the, what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? says the Lord, I am full of the burnt offerings of rams. See, the Lord was starting to get upset about these offerings because they would do these offerings, but their heart was far from, far from God. You know, we have to make sure that our hearts are right, you know, and the fat of the feed beasts. And, and I delight not in the blood of, of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who has hadeth required this at your hand to rend my courts? Bring no more vain, bring no more vain oblations. Um, Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and the Sabbaths. So they were doing these things, but they were not doing it from the heart. It was more of like a burden to them to do right. You know, it was a burden. It was becoming a burden unto them. Um, the new moons and the Sabbath, the calling of the assemblies, I can't, I, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the the solemn meetings, for your moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye uh, spread forth your hands, I will hide my face from you, you ye. When ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you. He's talking about things that's going on in the heart. Like these people were doing these things outwardly, trying to um, earn their own righteousness, but their hearts were truly far from him. And they, they had these things in the heart. And that's what Jesus' ministry was. He said, if you even had it in your heart, you have done it. If you even thought it, you have done it. He was trying to teach them that you need it to clean yourself inner you know not the out part but the inner part wash you and make you clean put away the evil of your doing and before mine eyes cease to do uh, cease to do evil learn to do well seek judgment reveal the oppressed judge the fatherless plead the widow come now and let us reason together. Come now, let, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sons be your sins be like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. He's asking, you know, for the people to come wholeheartedly to repent, you know, um, because though your sins be like crimson, crimson, they will be like they will be like wool if you come to Him. If ye, ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. You know, spoken it. And just finishing more of chapter 1, it says, How is the faithful city become an harlot? You can look at the, church, the seven churches in Revelation. They have become a harlot. It was full of judgment righteousness logged in it but now murderers murderers you know abortion you know people have and the lord had just revealed to me you know it's in the hearts everyone has it in the hearts who are we to judge people now no one can throw a stone you know we we like to stand up again and protest against you know um the the lbg the the abortions but we have done this in our hearts. You know, can anybody truly stand up? You know, nobody. You know, nobody can stand up. We have all fallen short. 
We have all, we have all have had this in our hearts, you know. It says, how is the faithful city become a harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness, logged in it, but now murderers. The, thy silver is become uh, doors. The, they wine mixed with water. The, thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loves gifts and follows their re after their rewards. Their judge, they judge not the fatherless, neither does the cause of the widow unto them. Therefore, says the Lord, and, and people's hearts are going, growing cold. Do, they, do you see people homeless and, and nobody stops and says, can I help you? Or gives them money to help them, you know? People are so afraid to do what's good nowadays because they're afraid, like, evil in the world has grown so much that they're afraid to do good, you know? People are afraid to do good because they're afraid they're either going to get taken advantage of or are they truly getting, you know, people's hearts are getting cold. They're not helping each other like they used to, you know? Sometimes you will see somebody in the supermarket that will drop something. Do you ever see a bunch of people run over and say, hey, let me get that for you. Let me help you. You never see this anymore. You don't see people open the door anymore. You don't see people just come and just talk to you for just a little bit, you know, and be present. You know, you don't see this. People's hearts are growing cold. You know, I work in the public, so I see this much more. And it seems like people... Um, just have become so rude and like they're in a rush you know nobody's willing to just sit around and just talk for a little bit and be present you know everybody's hearts have grown cold even the believer you know even myself have, have fallen into this you know where I will see someone who needs help and it's not like I I I, I I think about it later. That's the craziest thing. It's like I think about it later when I should have done something right then and there. You know, I hate I hate when that happens. I should have thought I should have did something right then and there. So um, it says, Therefore, says the Lord, the Lord of hosts, that mighty one of Israel, Aha, I will ease, I, I will erase me of mine adversaries and avenge me of my enemies. Uh, meagled warning and promise it says and I will turn my hand upon thee and purely and purge away thy, thy dross and take away all thy, thy tin and I will restore thy judgment uh, judges as at the first and thy um, counselors at the beginning afterwards thou shalt be called the city of righteousness the faithful city Zion will be redeemed with judgment and her um, converts and uh, with ju righteousness and the destruction of the transgressors and and of the sinners shall be together and they, they that forsake the Lord shall uh, be consumed for they shall be ashamed of the oaks which ye have desired and ye shall be uh, confound for the garden of the garden that ye have chosen for ye shall be as an, an oak whose leaf fadeth as a garden that has no water and the strong shall be a, as tow and the maker of it as a spark they shall both burn together and none shall quench them so, you know, Isaiah, a lot of what he has to say is literally everything that's happening right now. Everything that's happening right now. Okay. This is a messenger from Satan. Like, this is... He is here to still kill and destroy the Lord. I had a had a, I had a dream with him. Color does not matter in heaven. Everybody is This is this is what God wants. Jesus says as I I am and the Father are one, you too 
will be one with the Father. That's what he wants. It does not matter what, what color you are, whether you're short, fat, skinny, whatever. It does not matter. These things are ba this, these things are based on the flesh, and this is exactly what we're talking about here. These are de desires that gratify the flesh. These are worldly views, you know. You will know those who live by the spirit, who those literally meditate on spiritual things, and the people who meditate on spiritual things do not focus on the fleshly things. They don't look at the outward stuff, you know. They don't say. They don't say things like, oh, you look really fat, you don't belong in heaven, or you're black or you're white, you know. This is worldly views. These, this is Satan. This is clearly a messenger from Satan. So I had to block that. And I actually feel the devil is after us. He knows his time is very short. And he's trying to weaken the saints, and it's not going to happen. Like, I literally feel a little unwell today. And that's what the devil will do. He will try to make you feel unwell to oppress the message, you know? I literally feel it. You know, sometimes I go on this app, I'll feel fine, but then all of a sudden I'll go on this app and I'll feel like I'm going through a, um, an attack, you know? Spiritually, I can feel like I'm going under an attack. I don't know, do you guys feel that too? Because I, I feel it, you know, I'm, I'm very spiritual. I can feel and sense when things shift and change. And I can tell when there's some sort of oppression happening, you know, and I feel that right now. <laughs> and it's not going to work. So get behind me, Satan. It's not going to work. So, um, this is my favorite part when in Isaiah... 1 16 17 through 8 it says wash and make yourselves clean take your evil deeds out of my sight stop doing wrong learn to do right seek justice defend the oppressed take up the cause of the fatherless and plead the case of the widow the my favorite part 18 it says come now let us settle the matter this is what a true father would do to diffuse the situation. And you can see this through Abraham. See, this is the fruits of the Spirit, guys. Through Abraham, he says to Lot, let us not have strife against each other. You see the fruit. This is the fruit of the Spirit. We resolve the matter. We put to death that fleshly desire where we want to be right and we want to, you know, be puffed up. We put, we diffuse the, the um, you know, the argument, you know, we come into some sort of agreement, you know. In Joel uh, 2, 12 um, through 13, it says, Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments. You know, people were actually... Rend we see that with Ahab. He ripped his garments, but he was doing it in the heart. The Lord saw this. The Lord saw that Ahab was truly troubled in the heart. And when I read his little, his little section of his repentance, this is he's got a little section of it. He truly had it from the heart first, and then showed some kind of action along with that. He showed an action that goes along with that, and us too should show an action that goes along with us rending our hearts. But, you know, some people were rending their their hearts and not their garments. So it goes hand in hand, you know? It says, rend your hearts, not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. Uh, for He is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And He, he uh, relents and he uh, relents and from sending calamity he does not want to he does not take delight in his wrath he just wants you to do good the whole point of the wrath is to get rid of evil so it does not spread a little yeast 
a little yeast in will expand the lord has to diffuse it if it does not get fixed if it if their hearts are not changing this is what happened with sodom and gomorrah and you know egypt and you know ba babylon you know you can see and nineveh you know if they don't rend their hearts and turn the lord has to get rid of it so it doesn't manifest then the whole world will turn evil if the lord doesn't cut it off you know just like jesus gives us this example if your right arm causes you sin cut it off it doesn't mean literally it means we gotta stop this we have to stop doing evil and and to learn to do good if we're struggling with that we need to say god reteach us reteach us we have lost our way we have lost our way moses cried out he said lord teach us to live a right in you you know he is the one who carried the law he carried the law off of mount sinai he had communication with with god and yet he here he is pleading with god teach us to learn to live a right in you and moses would pray for the israelites so we have to make sacrificial prayers for our loved ones and other people out there not just make selfish prayers about ourselves i get caught up in that myself where i'm like god i need this god i need that can you help me with this we need to pray for everyone uh that their hearts that they may truly repent and stop doing what's wrong you know and and, and be sincere about it so when we do these things when, when we do these things god gives us each one of us a new heart and a new spirit you know and and a and a desire and an ability to keep his his statues so when we do these things he looks upon us and he gives us a new spirit and a new heart and the ability to keep his statues so ezekiel 36 uh 24 through 27 says for i will take out i will it says for i will take you out of the nations and i will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land by the way guys we are we are the seed of abraham we are that great nation from that barren woman sarah who ends up having she gives birth to a great nation a nation with faith this is us let us not spoil what god has blessed us with the promise through the seed of abraham jesus christ we accept him into our hearts let us not spoil what god has made good for us you know it says for i will it says for i will take you out of the nations and every time i talk talk about this i believe guys we are we're living in the last days he's he's gathering us 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 up for the great day he says i will gather you from all the countries and i will bring you back into your your own land and i will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean and i will clean you from all impurities this is the baptism of the holy spirit and from all your idols don't you see the gift is literally in ezekiel ezekiel uh 36 24 through 27 jesus christ is what god promised and also through abraham seed through that barren woman who by faith by faith we are now born again by faith it says i will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean and i will clean you from all your impurities and from all your idols i will give you a new heart and a new spirit in you and i will remove your your heart of stone when we accept him and we truly like look in that mirror intently we do something about it the lord takes notice and he gives us a new heart and this is where we bear that fruit we, we start to abide in him um i will remove i will remove from you your heart of stone and i will give you a heart of flesh and i will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my desires 
It's so interesting how this, there is a great revival happening. I have been woken up. You have been woken up. We are now, you know, having the desires to follow his decrees. We are living in the last days. This is prophesied that this would happen and Ezekiel is unfolding and it says, you will, you will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. A lot of people are now starting to wake up and see the importance of all this. So I, I made myself a little note here. It says the return from the exile in the Bab Babylon was a partial fulfillment of the Messianic passage. It looks forward to the coming of Christ and to um, inaugurate the new covenant. The new covenant is internal and unconditional and all who respond to God in faith can be can have a personal relationship with him, an intimate relationship with him. So this is that's the access of God is through his son. So I actually have to get ready for work. But it this this the word of God is so refreshing. It cleanses me. I love meditating on it. Except especially the book of Ezekiel. It's really calling out to me the the the, the prophecy of the dry bones. The Jewish people will say, and it's going to happen. It's going to say, I'm lost. I'm forgotten. And the Lord will say, no, you're not forgotten. You're not forgotten. I have not forgotten about you. Real quick, I'm going to read that because it's one of my favorites. Uh, most believers' favorites, not just me. A lot of believers love this one, Ezekiel. And then I have to get ready. Every, I feel like a lot of things in Ezekiel and Isaiah is like literally unfolding, repeating itself all over again. Like I encourage you guys, go read some, um, read, read Ezekiel, read um, Isaiah. You will start to see that the history is repeating itself. It's Ezekiel 37, I'm sorry. Okay, the, val the version of the vision of the valley of dry bones, it says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the Spirit. See, the Spirit will carry you to do things like, like Jesus was led by the Spirit to fast and pray. So sometimes you have to ask God, you know, the Holy Spirit, please lead me what I should do. Because the Holy Spirit is what's going to lead you. you know, he will be the one who delivers you from evil. You know, The Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And that's why we have to pray always for the Spirit to lead us to do what's right. And it says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord. And he sent me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. So, guys, this is, this is talking about the Jewish people today. They feel that the Lord has forgotten them. And this is a reminder 
The Lord has not forgotten them. It says, And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And he, and he says, you know, Ezekiel says, um, uh, and he answers, he says, O Lord, thou knowest. And again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these, upon these bones, and say to them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into thee, and ye shall live, and I will lay swoonness upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and I prophesied there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together before bone to bone. And when he, I beheld, lo, the swoonness of and the flesh came upon him, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then he said unto me, prophesied unto the wind, prophesied, son of man, and said to the wind, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breathe, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as I was commanded, commanded me, and he breath came unto them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding, uh, exceedingly a great vast army. And then he said unto me, Son of man, these are the whole house of Israel. And they say, Our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. And remember, the olive tree, they are cut off. They will be grafted back in. And the Lord says, Therefore prophesy saints unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold my people, I will open up your graves, and I will cause you to come out of your graves, and bring you um, into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. And when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, they will receive the Holy Spirit. And ye shall live, and I shall place you in my own land. And then ye, uh, then shall ye know that I am the Lord, have spoken it, and performed it, says it the Lord. So you will know. This is one of my favorite. This is one of my favorites, you know. And the King James Version is just... It's nice. I really like it. I still prefer the NIV. It, it's more clear to me. I do like the amplified version, too. So, I just figured I would end it off with Ezekiel 37. My favorite. It's a promise not just for the Jewish people, but those who have been dead, living in sin. He will revive you. You're you say you're hope you're hopeless you know he says no I will restore you I will put my spirit in you you know so I hope to see you guys next time I have to get ready for work so I'll God willing be on tomorrow and I will be praying for everyone and I just pray ask you guys to pray for me under undergoing some warfare right now <laughs> um, I'm sure I'll be okay but pr I'll pray for you guys and you pray for me and um, and always you know try to gratify the desires of the spirit and not the flesh and be able to detect those around you too do not be mean to those who are living by the flesh. Be merciful and understanding that you too were there yourself. I, I too was there. So I have to be merciful and understanding that I too was there. So when I see people do this, we should really truly, um, truly be 
concerned and trying to help them, but not trying to force them because nobody forced us, right? We, we learned the Holy Spirit came to us gentle. So that's why, how we should be gentle to them. So, um, and, a, and a lot of people, even in our own families, you see, even with Lot, had a little dispute with his family. It's, it's very normal. You can see in the Word of God, there's always been one that's led by the Spirit and one who's led by this, the, the flesh. You got Esau, who was being led by his stomach. He needed to have that bowl of stew, you know. So, it's important to be able to discern who is living by the Spirit and who is living by the flesh and just be cautious but be a light to them. Be a light as much as you can. And um, I hope to see you guys next time. Have a blessed day. Peace.